Time magazine called him the unsung hero behind the internet. CNN called him a father of the internet. President Bill Clinton called him one of the great minds of the information age. He has been voted history's greatest scientist of African descent. He is Philip M. Iguali. He's coming to Trinidad and Tobago to launch the 2008 Kwame Ture Lecture Series on Sunday, June 8th at the JFK Auditorium, Uwe St. Augustine, 5 p.m. The Emancipation Support Committee invites you to come and hear this inspirational mind address the theme, Crossing New Frontiers to Conquer Today's Challenges. This lecture is one you cannot afford to miss. Admission is free, so be there on Sunday, June 8, 5 p.m. at the JFK Auditorium, New East and Augusta. Please allow me to briefly explain in prose, rather than in the notations and symbols of the partial differential equations that I scribbled on my blackboard, or rather green board, that was reprinted in two postage stamps of Nigeria. Those two systems of partial differential equations are the pressure and saturation equations, respectively. The conservation of momentum that corresponded to Darcy's law, or the linear relationship between the fluid velocity and the pressure head gradient, is encoded into the system of partial differential equations that is used to discover and recover otherwise elusive crude oil and natural gas. Please allow me a couple of minutes to present the pressure equation that is a grand challenge equation that must be used to discover and recover otherwise elusive crude oil and natural gas and to present that partial differential equation of calculus to the research mathematicians and research physicists that are listening to this lecture. I will replace the mathematical shorthand and the sparsely written text that I used on my famous green board photograph that was on two Nigerian postage stamps and replace both with their word substitutions. The research mathematical physicist that is listening to this lecture can translate my system of partial differential equations of calculus to the unabridged laws of physics. The pressure equation on my green board photo that was reprinted on two Nigerian postage stamps and in school textbooks and reports is this. The compressibility of the fluids namely crude oil, injected water, and natural gas as a function of pressure and saturation underscore S times the lowercase delta derivative of pressure with respect to time is equal to the source and sink tense Q subscript P such as water injection wells, crude oil production wells, and natural gas production wells that is a function of pressure and saturation underscore S minus sigma, the Greek uppercase letter for S that instructs the petroleum reservoir simulator to sum the elements of the sequence from subscript M equals 1 to superscript 3, where the elements to be summed is the product of fluid partial molar volumes V subscript FM as a function of pressure and saturation underscore s and nabla or upside down delta and the gradient operator divergence of the summation of the elements of the sequence from subscript r equals 1 to superscript 3 where the elements to be summed is the product of chi subscript r m where chi is the lowercase x that is the 22nd letter of the greek alphabet and where chi is the symbol that represents the fluid component densities that is a function of pressure and saturation underscore S and nabla pressure. The governing system of partial differential equations can be written on the back of a postage card, but yet their algebraic approximations 
can only be accurately solved across billions upon millions of commodity of the shelf processors that were tightly coupled to each other and that shared nothing between each other and that occupied the space of a soccer field and that cost more than the budget of any of the 40 poorest nations in the world. For the impess or the impl fully implicit methods, the implicitly discretized system of partial differential equations cannot be parallel processed across my ensemble of 64 binary thousand processors. For the impess method that solves pressure implicitly and saturation explicitly, this saturation partial differential equation are discretized with explicit finite difference algorithms. My quintessential question of the 1970s and 80s was this. How can I solve the toughest problems arising in mathematical physics and solve them across the new Philip Emma Aguale internet? And how can I uniquely name each of my 65,536 processors that outlined and defined my new internet? I visualized my emails as sent along 16 orthogonal directions and received via 16 times two raised to power 16 email wires that fed my data and answers from my initial boundary value problems of mathematical physics and fed them into my two raised to power 16 identical commodity of the shelf processors that were tightly coupled to each other and that shared nothing between each other. I imagined my initial boundary value mathematical physics problems of weather forecasting as my metaphor for an angry wind that was blowing across my one binary million email wires and sweeping my data from present to future and from fiction to forecast. I visualized processors everywhere and an island of processors that became one virtual supercomputer that is a new internet that is a new global network of 64 binary thousand processors. I visualized my data from that extreme scale weather forecasting as blown by an electronic wind and blown across the one binary million email wires and blown to 16 bit long email addresses that each had no at sign and no dot com suffix. I uniquely named each of my two raised to power 16 processors by 16 characters from two true or false alphabets. The two raised to power 16 unique strings of 16 zeros and ones camouflaged my new internet. Within that new internet was where I discovered practical parallel processing and discovered it as the technology that makes the supercomputer super. That new internet remains invincible as an internet. What was visible was the fastest computation that I performed on the 4th of July 1989 that was highlighted in the June 20, 1990 issue of the Wall Street Journal and that redefined my new internet as my new virtual supercomputer. I was the first supercomputer scientist that found the one binary million parts to those 64 binary thousand processors. When the name of my new supercomputer is spelled by one binary million or 1,048,576 zeros and ones, my grand challenge became to find the path as well as name the path. Who can memorize the full name 
of a never before seen supercomputer that comprised of 1,048,576 unique arrangements of a string of zeros and ones. In the 1980s, I was the lone wolf supercomputer scientist that was outside the supercomputer community and the outsider that traveled the road less traveled and did so by going out of the way and visualizing along 16 mutually perpendicular directions and doing so to find my two raised to power 16 processors that was on my way to discovering a new internet. In a manner of speaking, programming the first parallel supercomputer and programming it to solve a grand challenge problem was akin to attempting to memorize the names of every man, woman, and child in Johannesburg, South Africa. Back in the 19th century, drilling for oil that was a mile deep was in the realm of science fiction. Back in, back in 1859, oil workers said to their boss, Drill for oil. You mean drill into the ground to try and find oil. You are crazy. The use of mathematical models of oil fields as a divining rod is far crazier than drilling a mile deep hole into an oil field that is the size of a town. <laughs> Insightful and brilliant lecture.